Um, thank you to everyone for staying with us to the end of the conference. Um, I'm not going to say very much at this point. Um, the voting is still open and will remain open whilst Hannah is speaking. And then when Hannah's um, concluded her concluding remarks, if that's the right way to say it, um, we'll announce the winners of the best presentation and best lightning talk. So um, I think for the, this is the second year we've done this. For the Learning Teaching Conference, I think it's really important that the last thing we hear is from one of our student reps, because there's no point doing what we do if it doesn't improve and enhance the student learning experience. So I'm really pleased that Hannah, who's our um, Vice President for Education in, with the SRC, um, has agreed to give our concluding remarks at the conference. So, Hannah. Hi everyone, so um, like it was just said, I'm Hannah Todd, I'm the Vice President of Education at the Student Representative Council, so I represent students on all their academic kind of learning and teaching side of things, so I sit on all the committees at the university and I work quite closely in partnership with a lot of people who are here today. Hello. Um, so yeah, I thought what I would do is just maybe take out some of the key messages from today, kind of talk about what ethos I've got from the whole conference itself, and just, just talk about what I hope we kind of got from this experience generally. Um, and I hope I cover all the bases. Um, so I think from our keynotes, we can all say that they've been incredible. And I kind of want to talk a little bit about what I feel I personally am going to take away from each of their talks. Um, so Claudia, um, you were amazing. Um, so I think it's, what I took away from your talk is that technology needs to serve pedagogy. And it's about the power of collaboration. You know, it's not about competition. It's about working together collaboratively. And it's about how interactiv interactivity and human experience at the core of facilitating learning. And that, you know, traditional lectures, you know, we can use technology to enhance them, but not necessarily replace them. And I thought that was a great talk. Um, Paul Chapman talked about VR and how it can facilitate learning, but it isn't without its limitations. And I think it's important that we do take that away from this. The fact that VR is kind of a, it's a growing technology and, and the ways we can use it are amazing and immense. You know, we can um, open up parts of arms. I've learned so much about the different ways VR can um, facilitate not only, you know, NVLS subjects, but in the humanities and things like that. And that was really interesting too. And David Simke gave us a history of education and kind of how we've come full circle almost. And I thought that was really interesting. And Adam Finkelstein talked about a subject I'm really passionate about, um, about the power of students being actively engaged and how space actually can stimulate learning and the ways, you know, we can use space to, you know, have underpinning pedagogy and actually facilitate the types of learning we want students to engage with. So I think the ethos behind the Learning Teaching Conference more generally is about how it's led by staff and students. I think, I don't know if everyone here saw some of the talks today by students, but you know, the, the students that um, have done Let's Talk talks are actually amazing and a testament to the fact we have really amazing students, not only students, but researchers here at the University of Glasgow. Um, and that's an amazing event also run by Leeds. I also think that it's staff and student led in throughout all of the presentations I've seen, well, not all of them, but the vast majority of them have been staff and student co-led, which I think kind of shows the ethos we have here at Glasgow. Staff and student partnership is at the heart of everything we do. And being a student representative, I get to work in partnership with staff all the time, and I think it's amazing. But it's not just from this level, it's to, to a local level as well. We see it all the time. Staff work closely with, with class reps, with school reps, and I think that, you know, the fact we've just launched loads of um, assessment and feedback internships where staff are working in partnership with students to improve assessment and feedback is also a testament to the fact we've got a really good staff-student partnership here at Glasgow and it's something that I'm really proud of and I think everyone here from Glasgow should be too. So it wouldn't be a talk if I didn't talk a little bit about the campus redevelopment as well. Um, more specifically, I'm going to talk about the Learning and Teaching Hub because there's eight buildings and I'm not going to go through eight different, you know, so on many project development boards, but I'm not going to bore you all with that. Um, I'm going to talk more specifically about the Learning and Teaching Hub because it's probably been the building I've been most involved in and you probably all know a bit about as well. But the reason I want to talk about this is because I feel like it's a microcosm for everything we've talked about in this conference more generally. I think that we have a chance here to pilot and launch innovation. Um, so it's, it's a chance to look at biophilic design. It's a chance to look about how textures and how colours affect the way people think and how they learn. Um, I think, you know, I've never been more fascinated with furniture than I am in life right now. Um, how, how does certain bits of furniture work in certain rooms? And how does it facilitate different types of learning? All things that Adam has touched upon in his talk. Um, so I find that fascinating too. And I feel like this whole project's been hugely experimental in a way. There's been nothing that's been off the cards. We've tried everything. Um, we've not been 
afraid to try new things, like try completely different things that are out of the box. Um, but I think that's what's made it such um, an enlightening and innovative project. Um, Teal Spaces are a prime example of this. So we've given it a chance to students for students to experience learning beyond the traditional lecture. We sit them in groups, we've given them technology, and we, we're allowing them to use it as much or as little as they want. And I think that's been really great. And what, what's not just great about creating those spaces and putting the furniture in the space, it's the fact that lectures have completely transformed the way they the way they teach and the way they've always taught to, to adapt to these spaces too. And um, I just did a talk on the Student Teaching Awards and all of the nominations highlighted the fact that staff are innovatively using these spaces and I think it's really important that you know our pedagogy kind of moves on. But like Frank said, um, we're on a journey here. Um, I think that the Learn Teaching Conference is only going to grow and adapt as we you know move into these spaces over the next few years. But like Frank said, we're on a journey. This is only just, you know, we're not don't even know if we're midway, but we're on our way to, you know, creating some really innovative and amazing practice with these spaces. So I'm just going to round off with what I think we've got out of the last few days. Um, so it's, it's about teaching, it's about embracing innovation and using new technology, and it's about wielding these tools to our advantage and, and also using them alongside traditional methods, you know, the human experience lectures more generally. And in terms of visualization, I think it's amazing that we can use all these new technologies. You know, it's not just about um, technological subjects, it's about you know, people in humanities and philosophy, they can go to the place where philosophers, you know, they did their philosophizing, and I think that's amazing. It's an amazing chance for students you know, who perhaps you know, can't easily jump on and get on a plane, can go to the Great Wall of China and learn, and learn from that experience. Um, so yeah, I think it's all about what we've learned is also about the rise of online and blended learning and MOOCs and how powerful these are as tools more generally. Um, for day two, I think we want to learn about, we've learned a lot about the ways students want to be engaged, challenged and motivated to think during class time. Um, it's about promoting active learning and going beyond tradition and finding new ways of engaging students and not only engaging with them, partnering with them to, you know, to create their own curriculum and to, you know, um, work with them actively on that. Um, and I think it's about how we use space and we make, um, we make these spaces accessible and flexible for learning and study for every types of students. And I think that learning and pedagogy infiltrates the space we teach in as much as it underpins things like assessment and feedback. So it wouldn't be a closing off speech if I didn't say some thank yous. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to do that. Um, I want to say thank you to all the inspiring speakers here today, especially our keynotes and everyone else more generally. Like there were so many amazing talks that I got to see. Um, thank you for pushing the boundaries when it comes to learning and teaching. We wouldn't have a learning and teaching conference if it wasn't without those people. I want to say a big thank you to Leeds themselves um, for all their hard work and dedication. I know how, how long this takes to plan. But not only this event, also their other events like their Let's Talk. That's a really great platform for students, to, undergraduate students to actually, you know, tell people about their research because they don't often get that opportunity. I went to that event too. It was absolutely amazing. And it's, it's such a great opportunity for students to, to give that back. Also, they do things like the LEAF Symposium. Amanda, I don't know where you are, but that's an amazing... Hi, Amanda. <laughs> that's an amazing event about assessment and feedback too, which students can also get involved in. And not only do they do these amazing events, they also continually support only, not only staff development, but student development as well. So I think at the end of this, we should give them a big round of applause, but I'm not done yet. I just want to also say, probably what Matthew's going to say, I'd just like to thank you all for coming. It's been great to share practice with you all and meet people from other institutions and get home safe, but I'm sure Matthew's going to say something else after. But yeah, if we give Leeds and everyone here a big round of applause for what they've done. It's been amazing. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hannah, for rounding today off. Um, I'm not going to do a Gwyneth Paltrow long thank you speech. Um, I would just like to thank um, the people in Leeds who've worked so hard to make this work. Um, as a number of people have said, you're probably sick of hearing it. We've never run a two-day conference like this before. Um, it's been an enormous amount of work. Um, Paul and his team did a lot of the work for the first day. Um, uh, but. The, and the steering group who've been amazing, which is a team of academics who support us through the process, have been amazing as well, really helping us get to grips with what we're trying to do and make a clarity when we're running around like headless chickens saying, what on earth are we going to talk about for two days? Um, they've been brilliant as well. But I have to particularly thank, they're not in the room because they're hiding, but I have to thank, and it's going on film so they can watch it later, um, Heather Keating and Fiona Bell from Leeds who do all the organisation for this. They, they make sure that the proceedings are together, they put all your bags together, they, they buy the presentations, they buy gifts for the, 
for the keynote speakers. They do everything that makes this work, and we couldn't have a conference without them. So I'd really like to say a huge thank you to Heather and Fiona. Um, thank you. So the last thing that there is to do is to award the prizes. Um, and unfortunately, not everyone can have prizes. We have looked at um, the voting. It is now closed, so you're too late if you've not voted. Um, we had two clear winners, which is always good, because it's always my worry. I'll log on to the system, and there'll be everybody equal, and somebody will have to toss a coin. But we had two very clear winners. We had um, over 80 votes for both categories, which is pretty good, given that you know, we, it's a system we're trying... Um, and not everyone stood around. So, now I put these carefully the right way around and now I've forgotten which round I put them. So, first of all, um, for the best lightning talk, um, the winner for the best lightning talk was Kirsty Watts, designing, developing, and assessing an interactive virtual lab environment for undergraduate organic chemistry. Kirsty. And with a, ver with a late surge, the winner of the Best Presentation Prize goes to Andrew Wilson for embedding play in higher education. That's all we have to do today. There is still plenty of shortbread biscuits out there. Please eat them. Thank you very much indeed, and you never know, we may do it again the same time next year. Have a good Easter. Thank you.